My dear friends, welcome to Mass of Wednesday of the Octave of Easter. This Mass is going to be offered for all of you. We pray in this Mass for you and your families. Pray and ask that God, who is all-powerful, all-merciful, and all-kind, may be with you and may bless you that God may answer any and every of your prayers. We continue to pray for people who are sick, especially those who are sick of all kinds of ailments and feel like no one cares about them or even thinks of them right now because everyone is focused, so focused on this virus. We pray that God may make them feel a sense that they still matter to every one of us. And so we pray for their healing too. Pray for those who are battling cancers. Pray for those who have undergone surgeries of all kinds. May God help and heal their recovery. We pray for those who are sickened by this virus. We pray for God's speedy healing. Pray for those who care for our sick, our nurses, our doctors. We continue to pray for our medical experts. Pray that God may be with them. We pray for um, all those who have died, especially for those who died under very, very sad circumstances, that God may be their comfort as they go to him and that God may bring healing to their families. I'd like you to bring out, to bring to God any other intention you carry in your hearts right now. I wanted to pray for my friend who is recovering from a stroke. Pray and ask that God may um, speed his recovery and return him to full health and pray for all those who have asked my prayers at this time. I bring all your intentions before this altar and I turn them over to the hands of Jesus. Let us sing the hymn on Jesus Christ is risen today. Jesus Christ is risen today. Oh, Earth on heavenly chorus say, Hallelujah. Raise your voice and throw your sword, Hallelujah. Sing it every part, In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, we gather here to celebrate God's love in this amazing sacrament given us by Christ as a sign of his love. In this Mass, I welcome all of you, and I bring all your intentions to this altar and beg that this from this altar to the altar of God in heaven, your intentions and your Christ may rise like incense. And so to prepare ourselves for this mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal a contrite of heart, God have mercy, God have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins. May He bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. For you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year with the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, graciously grant that by celebrating these present festivities, we may merit through them to reach eternal joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter and Paul were going up to the temple area for the three o'clock hour of prayer. And a man crippled by birth was carried and placed at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate every day to beg for alms from the people who entered the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for arms. Peter's, but Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. He paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, rise and walk. Then Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leaped up, stood and walked around and went into the temple with them, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the one who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with amazement and astonishment at what had happened to him. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name. Make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him. Sing his praise. Proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look at the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. Let all who seek the Lord Rejoice. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, Two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. They were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked by them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking down cast. One of them, named Clopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the thing that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, 
the things that happened to Jesus in Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deeds and word before God and all the people, and her chief priests and rulers, God handed him to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since that took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he inter interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. And as they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But, but they urged him, stay with us, for it's nearly evening, and the, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at the table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. But he had vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, um, today I would like to reflect with you on, on the, the first reading and, and the Gospel reading. And I'd like to pick one thing that I see that there's so much from these readings, each of them is so well, so 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 rich. You know, you could pick anything to reflect on. But but I like us to focus on one thing that um, seems to connect the two readings. In the first reading, I, I want you to try to imagine yourself being this cripple, because that's how I saw myself. I, I didn't see myself as Peter or John. I saw myself as this cripple. You know, um, we know how our lives have all been altered during this um, during this uh, pandemic. You're watching me now from wherever you are, not because you choose to, but because we have all been forced to. I'm doing this from where I am right now, not because I want to. I'm doing it alone because we have all been forced to. That means our timetable has been changed. Our lives have been changed. A lot has changed that we did not choose. We did not plan. We are just adjusting and adapting and trying to get used to different ways of doing things we care about. And so that's how our lives have all changed. And while we are hoping and expecting that we may come, there will be some normalcy restored sometime maybe down the line. We don't know when that sometime. So for now, this is our life. This is our situation. I don't see how, I'm not sitting down here and deceiving myself that tomorrow I'm gonna to wake up and suddenly everything is over and we're good, we can go back. I'm not dreaming that way. But I do have hope and I do believe that some way, somehow, somewhere, we will come to a point where slowly we will begin to regain our lives again and live normal lives again. But until then, I want us to focus on what is going on here. For this cripple, that was his life. You know, um, he he was crippled. Every morning they would bring him, bring him in whatever way because there were no there were no um, 
uh, wheelchairs. I'm sure they will lift him up, maybe on their backs or somehow, and bring him to this place and keep him there. That was his life. When he woke up that morning, I'm sure he was praying and hoping, God, I hope I'm able to make something that I can eat and just live for, for today. I hope people are going to be generous to me. I hope somebody is going to stop by who would make, maybe give me something better. I hope to, today is going to be better than tomorrow or than, than yesterday because maybe yesterday was a very poor day. He didn't make that much. So I'm sure that's what he was thinking about. He, he was thinking about today, just getting enough for today. So, and even those who brought him down there, we're just thinking about, maybe we'll just get him here and see if he can get enough to at least eat, take care of himself. No one except God alone who had a plan larger. Now, this guy was, he had a plan. It's just that his plan was this small. It was for today. I'm just going to survive for today. That's all I care about. That's all I'm asking for. And that's okay. But God, in his infinite wisdom, power, and goodness, had a vision like that was like this. He wasn't just going to get enough for today. He was going to be free to be what God intended for him to be all the while as a human being. He was going to get something he never imagined, never dreamt of. Did not even appear in a dream last night, the night before. And it was going to come from the most unlikely sources. He sees these two guys. They don't look like they are very wealthy. They just look like some average guys coming to pray at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And he sees them. And, of course, he is following his vision and his dream for something that can make his day. Just something, whatever it is. Two cents, two dollars, whatever. But definitely not what he got. And he says to them, please, can you help me, please, please, please? I'm blind, I'm paralyzed, I'm... And... Now... The Holy Spirit, I'm sure, spoke to Peter. He says, you stop, you hear him. That cry is a cry from the heart. He deserves more than he is asking for. He doesn't know it. But it's in your hands. You give it to him. And Peter stopped. And he said, look at us. And he did. Expecting he was going to get maybe two shillings or two dollars or two naira. Whatever. And Peter said, In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, rise and walk. And Peter held him up. I'm sure he was like, What's he doing? When Peter held him up. And suddenly he realized the limbs were strong, the hands, the legs could stand. He jumped to test and see if this was real. Yes, it's real. He ran around to see if this was really happening or he was dreaming. No, he wasn't dreaming. God is just done for him something that he never imagined. Not in his lifetime did he think that one day he was going to walk like you and I and do things, dance and jump. Never in his life. But God also wanted to change his life in some way. Yes, he was conditioned by something out of his control. God steps in and changes all of that because God has control. And in, in, in the second reading, in the gospel reading, we, we see how these two guys disappointed, frustrated that Jesus had just wasted their time. They were going back home to their normal lives, you know, to resume, hopefully to go regain something that they left behind. And then Jesus appears. They have a plan. They're going back home. They're frustrated. You could hear how disappointed they were. And suddenly, Jesus appears to them and goes on in everything else that I'm sure you know. But the point I'm making here is how God comes and changes our plans and changes our plans beyond anything we could ever imagine. For these guys, they thought they were done with Jerusalem. They thought, this is it. We're going back, going back home and just see what we can do. But you realize the story ended with them returning to Jerusalem. Why? Because God just came 
and reveal to them. He says, hey, your vision is like this. You can you are only seeing this much. Let me show you what plans I have. And when God opened up the plans in Christ for them to see, they didn't, con they didn't stay in Emmaus any longer. They returned to Jerusalem. They returned to where God wanted them to be. And that's you. That's you, whether the cripple, that's me, whether the cripple or these two disciples. God is saying to us, yes, yeah, we may have been, our, our lives, our plans may have been changed at this time, but he is doing something right now. And hopefully when everything is over, we will realize that, yes, our plans were that narrow. And suddenly he is going to show us what plan he has. And he is going to intervene, not one minute later, and just show us the, 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 the nature or magnitude of the plan he has. It's for you, it's for me. Because I am the cripple. I am this too frustrated and I'm angry and disappointed of discouraged disciples. But God isn't going to allow us in that situation. He is going to step in. In spite of our anxieties and our fears right now, he's going to step in and point the way of all he had in store for us. I remember the words of Paul. Paul said, I pray that God may open the eyes of your minds that you may see what future his call holds for you in Christ Jesus. And that's my hope, that you may see the future, the amazing future of God's call has for you and all of that in Christ Jesus. We hear how this gospel ends. It says, then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. My prayers, dear friends, are that as we break bread today here on this altar, God may make himself known in Christ as a lover of all lives and as a one who holds our future, as a one who has the best plans that we know nothing about. We have no idea. All we may be seeing right now is how everything is crumbling. But all the while, God is making sure all of those crumbling blocks are built into something great and something new. And I hope with faith you can behold it. Because Paul tells us in the letter to the Romans, he says, we live not by sight, we live by faith. I hope by faith you can behold something that by sight you are unable to see right now just as a cripple was unable to see. As always, I like to end my reflection by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God, that God loves you very much. God be with you. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we just want to thank you for everything you do. We pray and hope that as we celebrate this Eucharist, like these two disciples, we may behold you in a completely new way. We may experience you in a way that refreshes our souls and our spirits and encourages us to hold on and to return to the place you have marked out for us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick. Pray especially for those who are battling cancers. We pray for those who have tumors. Pray for those who are going for surgeries. Pray for people suffering other ailments, strokes, and all kinds of diseases. That God may be with them to help them find healing at this time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for parents who are dealing with children who have physical or mental disabilities and are stressed out or even exhausted emotionally and physically at this time because of the cost of having to deal with these children. That God may help them realize that they have been called specially by the Almighty God to be the loving parents that these children so deserve, and that this is a vote of confidence in their character and their abilities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sickened by this virus, pray especially for those in critical care, that our good God may visit with them today, and that something might begin to change right now in their own lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for your own needs and pray for all the intentions that you have lifted today before God. That God who is ever present, God who is ever able, God who is ever kind, ever compassionate, will reveal himself to you and grant every of those desires. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our world. 
pray for our leaders around the world, that all leaders may think about the good of their people, the health of our society, and focus on making sure that everyone is protected and everyone is given the best chance to survive this, this, this tragedy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our dead. Pray especially for those who have died under very lonely circumstances. May God be with them. May God grant them rest in his presence. May God bring comfort to their families and to their loved ones. May God please heal our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now lift our hearts and ask God for any private intention that we do not have the chance to bring to God in prayer. Let us end by asking our Blessed Mother's intercession as together we say the Hail Holy Queen. Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our lives are our sweetness and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banishment of evil. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. After this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of your own Jesus. O Clemens, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, which will become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice which has redeemed the human race and the pleased to accomplish in us salvation of mind and body. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your heart. We lead them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to Lord yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, he is a true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our lives. And by rising, has restored our lives. Therefore, overcome with Pascal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly host and the powers, the heavenly powers and angelic host, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as their queen. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the two fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks. He broke it gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up. For this, take this and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. Using the second acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death will go until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be covered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Timothy Broglie, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember, O oh Lord, our brothers and sisters who have died, especially those who have died from this virus and those who died alone. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your grace. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have blessed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With confidence, dear friends, let us use the words our Lord gave us and pray to God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Deliver us from the effect of this disease, O God. We graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress, as we are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace I need in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of God's peace. Peace be with you and your family and your loved ones and everyone that you carry in your heart. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Look up, my dear friends. Look up and behold the Lamb of God. This is Jesus. He is our Lord. He is our bread of life. He revealed himself to two unbelieving disciples. And he revealed himself to us as we follow him, as we hear him, as we tread this morning. Blessed are those who Enter 
Não necessariamente nós somos cristãos. Mas nós não nos falamos. 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 We ask our God that we heal our body. We ask our God that we heal our righteousness. We ask our God that we heal our doubts, our fears. We are God's to win our hearts. That as we put ourselves to you, that in your will, or in our hearts, and in our lives, we are going to space. That was all that we know. We pray, O oh Lord, that the reverent reception of the sacrament of your Son's body and blood may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into a new creation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for participating in this Eucharist or for watching at a later, later time. And I pray that what happens here in our readings today may be your experience in your own way and as God will choose for every one of us. So as if you forget anything and everything I said today, don't forget this, that you are the delight of Almighty God and that God loves you very much. Let us pray. Dear God, watch over and bless your children. Watch over and reveal yourself to them. Watch over, O oh God, and change their fortunes as you did today, first to the crippled and then to the two unbelieving disciples. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Um, we would um, sing for our final, our final hymn. We're going to sing, hallelujah, sing to Jesus. Hallelujah, sing to Jesus peace. This earth so is the throne. Hallelujah, is the triumph, is the victory alone. Of the songs of peace, full Zion turn. The like a mighty flood, Jesus out of every nation, God redeemed us by his blood. Alleluia, not as orphans are we left, in sorrow now, Alleluia, he 
is near us, faithfully, no questions how. Though the cloud from sight received him when the forty days were old, shall our hearts forget his promise? I am with 